Welcome. In this video, we're going to be unboxing Armageddon War, designed by Greg Porter. Armageddon War was originally released in November of 2017 and was reprinted November of 2023. You can get your copy in the Flying Pig Game Store, which I will link in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks. <laughs> Armageddon is a platoon level game set in the near future in the Middle East. It uses a unique chip pull activation system that allows for continuous gameplay. It does this by using an activation turn tracker. So instead of the chits being returned to the cup at the end of a turn, they're returned as the activation tracker fills. In addition, Armageddon War is really unique because it uses dice to resolve combat instead of complex tables. There are three different color dice, which we'll see in just a minute and they have different faces to increase chances of hits, counter strikes, or potentially nothing happening at all. When you get your copy of Armageddon War, you're gonna notice that it's a pretty big box and that it's pretty heavy. The outside of the box, um, the box design was done by Gilles U.M. Reese, and then the art was done by Zachary Smith. Zachary Smith is an engraver, he engraves guns, and you can tell this from the style of art um, that's kind of sketchy on the front. I'll give some more closer up shots um, in just a bit. The game was designed by Greg Porter and the maps and the counter art were done by Shane Logan. You might recognize that name from the old school tactical series. Shane Logan is the designer of that series. Inside the box, you're gonna get two mounted maps that are 22 inches by 33 inches. You will get four sheets of die cut one inch counters, which include Israeli counters, Americans, rebels, Russians, and the ISIL. In addition, you will get a full color rule book, a strategy guide, and two player aid cards, and you will get 18 colored dice. Armageddon War is a two player game. There is a solitaire um, AI available, but we're out of stock of it right now. Hopefully we will get more in in the future. We hope to do a reprint at some point. Um, and it plays around one to three hours, depending on the scenario. I'd like to start with the rule book. I can't speak highly enough of these rules. I really actually enjoyed reading this rule book. Uh, some rule books can be kind of dry, especially when we are talking about war games. Um, but this rule book read like a book. It was awesome. The way that Greg wrote the rules, um, it is very fluid. It's very easy to read. It's very approachable. If you are new to tactical games, uh, this is a great rule book to start with because he goes into detail as to why he chose certain game mechanics, how they function, how that relates to reality, and maybe if it doesn't relate to reality and it's more about balance and playability. A great example of this is his stacking limit. In Armageddon War, there's a two unit stacking limit, which when you think about it, doesn't really make sense because these units are representing platoons and you could, and each hex on the map is representing 150 meters and you could easily fit more then two platoons of tanks or two um, platoons of infantry into 150 meter space. But as he explains on page nine of the rules, if you had any more than two as a stacking limit, you would end up getting these, he calls them teetering stacks of doom. I think many of these, many of us have um, experienced these in war games and they just dominate the game board. So while the limit of two units doesn't relate to reality and combat and reality, it makes sense for playability and balance of game. So like I said, when Greg goes into detail about why he made some of his decisions, and he's not the only designer who does this, but in Armageddon War, um, I really enjoyed those sections in the rule book. Another great example is his A Few Notes on Reality on page 10. He goes into scale, aggression, and firepower. So check this out when you get your copy of Get In War. So next up, let's talk about the 18 colored dice. So like I said before, Armageddon War uses dice to resolve combat. There are three different colors of dice in Armageddon War. There is black, which represents normal fire. 
There's red, which represents intense fire. And then there's green, which represents weak fire. Overall in the game, like I said, there are 18 dice. You can see on the green that there's a lot more blank faces. An important aspect of Armageddon War is that there is dice number represented by DN, and then there is dice quality represented by DQ. Dice number is the number of a certain color of dice that you are going to be rolling, and dice quality is the type of dice you're going to roll. So for example, if you were to start off by rolling a dice number of three black dice, this is your normal, but then there was something that modified it, uh, such as terrain, there could be a minus one to DQ, which would be dice quality. That would mean that one of these black dice would be traded out for a green. Remember, the green is a weaker dice. So all the modifications you're going to do are going to be based on dice number and dice quality. Greg also points out that there are two things you need to remember. Um, well, there's a lot of things you need to remember, but two important things to get you started playing Armageddon more when it comes to the dice. Number one, you will never roll more than six dice at a time. Number two, you will never roll all three colors. So it is little points like that that Greg puts in the rules that makes this game really fast and easy to learn. So the different dice faces have different symbols on them. So this here, that explosion, is a hit. And the shields are counter strikes, which I think makes Armageddon War really fun because not only when you're rolling to attack are you worried about hitting your target, you're also worried about how many counter counter strikes are they potentially going to get, which makes gameplay feel so much more continuous and realistic, I assume, where if you're firing at someone, they're going to fire back at you probably if they can. Um, and so I really like this aspect of, of Armageddon War. It, you know, there's an element of strategy there. Like if I attack this unit here and there's going to be, I know there's going to be more red dice. Yes, there's more chances to hit. There's also more chances for counter strikes to happen. If you look at page two of the rule book, there's a really helpful chart um, about the dice probability. All right, so moving on to the counters that you get in Armageddon War. These are great, super thick one inch counters. So these counters include multiple factions within Armageddon War. Um, these factions include the US, Russia, ISIL, Israel, and the rebels. In addition, the counters include support weapons, um, and these amazing admin counters, which I'm going to get into in just a minute. They're one of my favorite parts of this game. So to show you a few examples of the counters, here are the rebels and some of the Israeli forces, and then a couple of Russians in the bottom corner. Here are the support weapons and some other counters that you'll need for different scenarios, the logistics counters. You can see super thick. Here are the Americans and the Russians. Here we have the different factions within the ISIL. Look at closer so you can see their names. All right, so you're probably thinking she said there were only four sheets of counters and she's about to hold up a fifth and you're totally right. The fifth one are admin counters, which typically kind of boring, um, but I think in this game are really add to the speed of the gameplay and to reducing checking back in the rule book and things like that. So these admin counters have a little flag on the side and this isn't the first time something like this has been done, but I do think it's super smart. The flag is actually gonna stick out from underneath the counter and this is gonna eliminate having to constantly unstack units and look at the information on the counters that were in that stack. And we've all been there. And this helps with that. So you can see there is, you use these for when you've actually taken an action. And then also you're going to use them for damage. So there are five steps of damage. The first one is going to be action. So you would place a green. The second one is going to be pinned, which is yellow. The third is shaken. Uh, the fourth one is reduced. And then the fifth hit of damage is going to be eliminated from the game. Okay, you might be thinking that's not a lot of shaken and pinned counters, but don't worry. On the back, if you flip over the action counters, there are more pinned and shaken on the opposite side of the action counters. So these are also used not just for damage, but when you take an action. So for example, if your unit had already taken an action and then takes damage, it would go to the next 
level of damage from that action counter. So if it had the green action, it would go to pinned. Armageddon More also comes with two player aid cards with the terrain modifiers on the back. And then also some reference for the units and then those really sweet admin counters I talked about before. Turn sequence, fire combat, movement, close combat, and some special range characteristics. Uh, for example, if the range is circled, it has uh, certain characteristics that units that don't have a circled range would have. There's also the strategy guide, which I actually really enjoy. Um, it has a little bit of something for everybody. If you're a seasoned tactical gamer, it's got something for you. Some of it's going to be familiar to you if you're seasoned. Um, it also has a lot of information that will help you out if you're new to tactical gaming. So I think all around this game really is um, has a little bit of something for everybody. And for me, as a person who personally has played a lot of tactical games, but isn't so much well-versed on all of the different units, um, in the back, he actually, on pages 15 and 16, he contains these great descriptions of the different um, units involved in the game. And uh, like, you know, for example, the vehicles and such. And then it kind of helps me make sense of why he would have chose some of the game mechanics he did based on the abilities of these units in real life. So that's really helpful for people who are trying to get into war games and tactical games, but might feel a bit um, daunted or, you know, uh, they might feel like the terminology is a little bit much for them. This really helps you get into the game so that you can enjoy the game itself without feeling that barrier of the vocabulary that um, is included, especially with the unit. Lastly, there are two gorgeous mounted maps um, that contain 15 different types of terrain. Thanks again for watching this video about the unboxing of Armageddon War. As I said earlier in the video, I've dropped a link in the description so that you can pick up your own copy of Armageddon War. I hope you can get it soon and get to playing it. It is a lot of fun. It is super creative and rich with tactics and strategy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Mm -hmm.